Let's pray. Father, have your way and do your own thing, your servant. As I speak your word, minister to your people, minister to their spirits, minister to their souls, minister to their bodies. We thank you for the power of your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's our month of fruitfulness, and we've been talking on between your seed time and your harvest time. Between your seed time and your harvest time, our scripture has been John 12, 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. I've said that life is about results. It's about achievement. It's about bearing fruit. But for you to bear fruit, you need to sow seeds. Between when you sow your seeds and when you see your fruit is what we call the dormancy period. I have taken my time to share with you the four seeds I have sown in my life and how I waited for 15 years for them to start bearing fruit. And the fruit became evident or was possible because I was able to manage 15 years of dormancy period. 15 years of dormancy period where I have put efforts in life, in pastoring, in evangelism, in soul winning, and yet for that 15 years, I spent five of those 15 years on the Sprinters Road here living in uncompleted buildings. 15 solid years. But I was able to manage my dormancy period. And I shared with you that managing your dormancy period includes being patient, being prayerful, praying for protection as well, allowing God to prune you, being very purposeful, creating room for God to bless you, and finally having a praise attitude. Today, I want to talk to you on what I call the dominance period. So from if you manage your dormancy period well, where people may even assume that your God is not faithful, where they will say that you have served God all these years and they have not seen anything, where you yourself at one point, if you don't take care, you will give up on yourself. Where people will think you have failed. If you manage your dormancy period well, you move into a new period called the dominance period. I want to begin with a very, very important scripture that changed my life. This scripture really changed my life. I was praying in the Ashimata forest. And as I, pr I was praying, the Lord was referring me to scriptures. The Lord was referring me to scriptures. And the Holy Spirit referred me to this scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and the verse 9. From the NIV. I have been with you wherever you have gone. And I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now, I will make your name great. Like the names of the greatest men on earth. Wow. Wow. The Lord said to me in that prayer, I was very desperate. I was waiting for my, my, the fruit of my labor. I was waiting for the manifestations of the fruit of my labor. I was in my dormancy period, living in abject poverty after 15 years of pastoring and serving God faithfully. Proud to that 15 years, I spent over 10 years in evangelism as a non-pastor. 
And then I was praying. Then the Lord dropped this scripture in my heart. I have been with you wherever you have gone. Brother, you are not alone. Whatever you are going through, the Lord has sent me to tell you he is with you. You are not alone. He is with you. You are not alone in that situation. The Lord is with you. Then he goes on to say, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. It was a new beginning for me. I said, Lord, so those behind, you have dealt with them. Now those before me too, you have cut them off. Since then, I have never lost a battle. May you never lose a battle. I declare, I speak before you and before God. May God cut off every enemy before you. May your God prove to every enemy of yours that he is a living God. And he is with you like a mighty warrior. And God was talking to David. And David had a lot of enemies. And David waged a lot of battles. And the Lord said, I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now, this is where the thing is. Now. Now. It was as if that time the Lord was telling me, now, from today. He said, I will make your name great. Like the names of the greatest men on earth. So I changed my prayer topic. And I said, Lord, make my name great. You see? And this was the same thing God told Abraham. That I will make your name great. See, when we talk about dominance, it is like having a domain. See, there is a world out there, a digital world out there. It is called World Wide Web. Okay? Digital world there. Now, you can buy a domain. That domain, when you buy it and you have a name to it, I think I have ttoffair.com or ttoffair.org. Once you buy it, it is for you. Nobody can. And you can do a lot with it. Like we have Accra Business School, abs.edu.gh. Nobody can ever use it. It is not available for anybody. So it's a domain. Now, as I continue to build Accra Business School, it stopped just being a domain. It became a very dominant force. It begins to get respect. It begins to influence policy. The school begins to change things. When Accra Business School issues a statement on business in Ghana, people will take it serious. You see, God wants you to be a dominant force. He wants you to be recognized. He wants you to be great. He wants you to have a great name. But there are principles that lead to this. Greatness is not by luck. Fruitfulness is not by luck. There, is, there are divine principles that you can follow to achieve greatness. And I want to share that with you. Give me the next 30 minutes. Let me give you the keys that can make a man sitting here in this room whose father was a palm wine tapper and a mother an illiterate in a village. You were born in a village without water, without electricity. Nobody knows you. But you can become a president. Uh, only few people believed it. You can become a president. Kwame Nkrumah's mother was an illiterate. Yeah, was an illiterate. He was born in Krofo, where there was no water and electricity. Up to now, in Krofo is underdeveloped. 
But he became the millennial man of Africa. Even when unbelievers follow God's principles, they become a dominant force. There are two ways people look at this world. For some people, life is a journey. They are just passing through the earth. There is this song that I used to like. A later one, I analyzed the song. I say, this song is not biblical. It was done by Jim Riffs. This world is not my home. I'm just in passing through. I said, no. It is not my home, but I'm not just passing through. I am here to make a mark. I am here to make history. I am here to make impact. I am here for somebody's life to be transformed. When I hear the testimonies of young pastors and how my ministry has impacted their lives and their calling, when I hear your own testimony of how being in this church, your life has changed, you have known God better, you are serving him well, oh, I get excited about it. Are you here with me? Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? When I meet people I went to this bank, huge facility with different companies at every level. I was going to see my relationship manager. I got there and a group of young people in that bank come to the waiting area and begin to celebrate me and speak very highly of me that they came to Accra. Someone said, if it's not Accra, I've been waiting to do my MBA for a long time until Accra Business School came with this innovative way of doing your MBA and this person will speak, this person will speak and then someone say, oh, that's next floor the company there also have people from Accra Business School and then they went and called them and then the, those who came from that floor said another group at the top also came to Accra Business School within one facility the number of young people who whose life's career have been affected by by the ministry called Accra Business School. When you go to my hometown at Mampel Kapim, there's a hospital there. It's called the Tetekwashi Memorial Hospital. Who is Tetekwashi? He used to be on our currency. Is he still on the currency? He used to, when I was growing up, she was on our currency. They have removed him. Because this whole country has been hijacked by politicians. I'm telling you, it has been hijacked. Somebody can teach in the community for 40 years. And they will not even name a tree after the person. But somebody becomes a DCE for four years. And a street is named after him. If you don't rise up this country... It's going into a ditch. We need to. So, Tetequashi, Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa. And for so many years, cocoa had been the backbone of our economy. One man went to a place known as uh, Fernando, Fernando Po. Some, an island in Equatorial Guinea. And smuggled out of Equatorial Guinea cocoa beans and brought it to Ghana and planted one man's decision that I want to get out of this country and go to my country and make impact. One man's decision held our economy together for years until we discovered oil. Until we discovered oil. Then you are driving somewhere, say, Tetequashi, run about. Tetequashi. I will not be surprised that in the next 10 years, if we don't wise up as a country, even Tetequashi, run about, will be named after. Will be named after somebody who just came to rule this country for four years or for eight years and feels that we owe him or her. I am telling you. 
I am telling you. We need to wake up. But now let me focus on you. Let me not be in trouble. I am a simple preacher. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm only giving examples. And it happened that politicians became one of the very perfect examples. Oh my God. Now let's look at this scripture. Genesis 1 verse 28. A few of our aces are not working so I know that the room is hot. I'll close very soon. But it is cooler than hell. So, 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 I'm, and I'm taking you to heaven. So, Genesis 1 verse 28. Reading from the King James Version. And God blessed them. God blessed them. Now, when you hear the word blessed, it's divine enablement to prosper. Divine enablement to prosper. A divine capacity to be able to prosper. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion and have dominion. <laughs> there are five key things I want to share with you right now. And the Lord blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful. So fruitfulness is a blessing. And multiply. Multiplication is a blessing. And replenish the earth. Your capacity to fill every space available around you is a blessing. And subdue it. To have authority is a blessing. And have dominion. To have your own domain. Like Bachona is my domain. <laughs> it's my domain. Wow. Time is going to come. They will have to rezone some areas, redirect some roads. You know, you know, you know, it's happening. It's happening. There are churches that government has to rezone areas, redirect roads. To be able to accommodate them. We are not just building chapels. We are building communities. We are not just building communities. I was having a conversation with someone. Who said to me. Who said to me. Who said to me. The churches are doing so well. In this country. I don't know why the politicians. Are not learning from the pastors. I was quite a little while thinking about why he wanted the politician to learn from the pastors. And then he moved on and said, Bishop, how many Ghanaian companies have branches outside Ghana? Even Ghanaian banks are afraid to go to Togo. But I said, look at your churches. Look at your churches. There are Ghanaian churches in in." Over 100 countries. You take one guy. Like the church of Pentecost. Take Bishop Dark. He was males. Those you call one man churches. And it is. Without Bishop Dark. There is no UD. And every church begins with one man. It takes a process. For the church to move from an individual. Into an institution. One man, thousands of branches. One man, thousands of, bran of branches. And yet, banks that are declaring millions of Ghana cities profit cannot even cross to Togo. There is something about applying supernatural principles. You can find a man in a corner with 55 people in his church, yet he has a branch in UK. That, I'm telling you, there is something about supernatural. That's why sometimes, see, I want, I have to warn you, eh? Don't make pastors matters your matter. Don't sit down in judgment of people. Oh my God. 
Do you know that the greatest threat to every politician is the church? That is why when we preach, they come after us to silence us, to make sure that we, we, we don't touch them because they know, they know. But in Africa, we have not even used our power enough. Church of Pentecost alone can decide who becomes president. United denominations can. Central can. How many politicians can fill Independence Square? They cannot. Pa, 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 Pastor Prince fills there with his, with his uh, all night. They know, they know the capacity we have. They are nothing upon us. So when we come and we teach you principles, believe it, because we are living examples of the principles. I came here empty-handed. Look at what I've done in this community. And look at what I continue to do in this community. Look at the transformation I've brought. The reason why I love this song, eh? There is something that makes me come into your... You see, anytime you are working with God, there is always something. You see, why you cannot give something a name, you call it something. Why you cannot explain it? You call it something. It's a mystery, you see. There is something that makes me do some things that me, myself, I know that I cannot explain it, but I know that it's the hand of the Lord. Oh, may the hand of the Lord come upon someone here. May someone have a something testimony. A something testimony. My God, you come here and say that I was going somewhere and something asked me to pass here. And then when I passed there, I met my husband. And something made me to pass here. And then when I passed there, I saw that a man's car has gotten into a gutter. I went to help the man to pick. Apparently, the man was the CEO of some company and I was looking for a job. Today, I'm an entrepreneur. Ah! That's something. The typical Nigerian will say, that's something. That's something. Ah. Can I preach now? So, let me show you the dormancy roadmap. You see, the Lord said, be fruitful. Only few people are able to move from fruitfulness into multiplication. Now, please, I beg you, eh? don't write. Just look at me. I will put, David, as I'm speaking right now, if you can, put the notes on the, all the church platforms. You will get it. Okay, well, then when you finish, you go and watch it again at home. And then you make notes. Okay? On the, this thing. But now, the Lord said, be fruitful. And I need you to know that when God sees something, he is committed to it. Okay? And, but immediately you hear that God says, be fruitful. It means that he has given a promise, but he has committed you to a task. Immediately he said, be fruitful. He has made you a farmer. In other words, you have to plant a seed for you to become fruitful. I already taught you. The four seeds I planted. Now when God blesses you. He puts a responsibility. On you. A huge responsibility. During the three days lockdown. I was taken ill. But I still had to show up. I have to show up this morning. What a responsibility. I was just planning that tomorrow. I was going to take tomorrow off. And I just sat here and realized the number of things I have to do this week. And I said, tomorrow's off is off. Once God blesses you, he puts a responsibility on you. So when God said, be fruitful, 
be fruitful, he immediately moved you away from being any other thing apart from a farmer. Are you here? So to be able to manifest this, this blessing of fruitfulness, you will need to sow seeds. And I told you from the beginning, four types of seeds that I had that I sowed. Number one was time. I have made use of my time very well. Number two, my talent. I discovered that I have the ability to speak, to write, and to think. I have developed it very well, and that is what has manifested in Accra Business School. We are big boys. Big, big, big boys. We are not small boys, big boys. You, you get it? And then, tasking. I believe that one of the grace God has given me is, is my ability to work hard. Ability to work hard. And to work. And these seeds that I have sown, I'm now seeing the fruits of it. But here, God puts a responsibility on you, but also enables you to fulfill it. So Leviticus 26 verse 9, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful. So even though I worked hard, even though I managed my time, without the favor of God, I wouldn't have been here. You see, what gives the believer an advantage is the favor of God. I pray that may God look at you with favor. So now, so listen, it is very easy to be fruitful, but more difficult to multiply your fruitfulness. So some people will go to school, get a job, and all they can become and remain till they retire is to work and get salary and wait for retirement age and depend on snit till they die. That is fruitfulness. It is not multiplication. You are bigger than living your life on retirement package. But it's all right. I'm not forcing anybody here. If you want to remain fruitful, be there. But that is not the end of the blessing. It is not the end of the blessing. We are applying for charter, car business school, to become fully chartered university. And when we charter, we are going to explode. I'm starting what I call the Tattoo Affairs Systems. And almost every country in West Africa will have a higher education institution that is part of the Tattoo Affairs Systems. Do you understand? I am training a number of young pastors. It's expensive. I am investing in them. I am taking them to rigorous pastoral training and apprenticeship. One day you'll be here. I will announce that we are starting 100 churches in one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I started buying lands in different communities preserving them for that takeoff because you can't only be fruitful you have to also multiply between fruitfulness and multiplication is replanting 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 i want to show you something you see this scripture genesis 1 verse 29 genesis 1 29 then God said, I will give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. That has fruit with seed in it. Every fruit God gives you has seed in it. 
if you eat your fruit and the seed in it, you have failed to pay your bill for the future. Here is the thing. So let's say I go and do construction. I'm a mason. I go and carry mortar. Then I finish and my daily wage is 100 Ghana cities. Once I receive this 100 Ghana cities, I will have to understand that this is the fruit of my labor. But inside this fruit of my labor are seeds. And I don't have to eat all in one day. I don't have to finish and go and sit at Kotobabi and buy Banku and Tilapia, 70 cities. Then when I finish, I buy Coke and Fanta and consume all and build and then know that the next day I will get. So the next day I go again, I get it. But if I go and do Libra and I get this hundred cities, I will pay the bill for my future by making sure that this fruit, there is a seed. At least 40% of it. If I give God's own 10%, I am left with nine. I must at least take 40% of it to pay the bills for the future. To understand that Today, I have muscles. I can carry concrete. Tomorrow, my time, I might not be able to carry that concrete. Or I have to graduate from carrying concrete to now missing concrete for someone to carry. For that to happen, I have to make sure that I replant my seeds. I borrowed somebody's 500 Ghana cities in 2004. 2004. To start Accra Business School. That five, when I did my conference, I got a profit of 1,600. I don't remember I even spent 200 of that 1,600. I put all back in. I put all back in. I put all back in. I keep make, making money. I keep putting it in. I told mommy, we need to strategize. We have to make sure that this blessing God has given to us will not only last us and our children, but our children's children and in the fourth and the third generation. I want anybody from my offspring to one day say that my great-grandchild can live in my house to start his life. My great-grandchild, when he's of eight, age, can be handed a, a, a house key and be told that your great-grandfather and mother built enough houses. You don't have to start life by building. Start life by living in what they built so that you can build upon what they have built in future. <laughs> to become successful, you have to be transgenerational in your thinking. Before I even met mommy and proposed love to her and married her having children, I was already thinking my choices in life was based on the fact that I must, I must outlive me. When I die, I must continue to live on. Most of the people who did a demonstration this past week, high young people, they never met Kwame Nkrumah, but they were carrying Kwame Nkrumah saying, and Kwame Nkrumah's picture to do the demonstration. Why? A man who decided to be transgenerational. Nobody anywhere can go and say Kwame Nkrumah has a house here, kept money here, or this, this here. You see Kwame Nkrumah's children in Ghana. They are not like this modern day politicians whose children own half of Ghana. 
I am telling you, it's so miserable. And some of the people who have become your mentors, and you, anybody whose prosperity is politically tainted cannot be a mentor. They are hard, hard young men and women who have worked and have made their money without any political contract, political favor. These are the people who are supposed to be your mentors. These are the people who are supposed to be your mentors. So replant. Young man, you made money. The first thing you want to do is to buy a car. For who? You? You don't have land? Even, sometimes it doesn't make sense to buy land. Ah, you have gotten 100 cities. That 100 cities, if you put it in the business, it can give it to another 100 cities. But you are used to go and buy land. And now you are borrowing money from people. Can you give me this to eat? Give, eventually, you know what will happen. You will go and sell the land. Then you sell it even because you will be so much in hardship that you will sell it cheaper than you bought it. I see a lot of young men, when you talk to them, they, you are starting to build a house. I'll say, build boys' quarters first. Well, what you are earning cannot build you the three-bedroom or the four-bedroom house you want to build. So you buy the land, use that money to build boys' quarters first. After building the boys' quarters, you will see the wisdom you need. You may not be able to even build the game, but you have a place to stay. Than to have a big building that will become an uncompleted building for the rest of your life. You have a build building that will become an uncompleted building for the rest of your life. Sometimes our pride and ego makes us feel that we have faith. But it's not faith. It is pride and ego. It is competition. Years ago, I used to have sons who would come to me and say, Daddy, my landlord wants to teach me, teach me. My rent just expired and he has doubled it. I said, son, I am on the side of your landlord. So that you why? I said, son, because your car that you drive is more expensive than the house you live in. And your landlord feels you are a fool. To come and rent a house from me when you have your car is more expensive than the house. I built this house with 50000 Your car is $120,000. You can build two of these houses. And yet you are renting it from me. What a fool. Whose son is this foolish boy? Whose daughter is this foolish girl? Who has decided that her weeks, her weeks alone can pay her school fees and yet her weeks alone can give her capital to trade. And yet she says, I don't have capital. And she's worrying everybody in the church. I told the story of a young lady who came to me and was telling me, Daddy, you have been preaching that we should go to school. So by the grace of God, I'm starting school and I need help for my school fees. I said, how much do you need? And she mentioned it. I said, daughter, you have it. So Daddy, I don't have it. I said, daughter, you have it. Daddy, I don't have it. I said, you see your phone you have. If you sell it, this amount you are looking for, you can get it. You can get it and buy yam. I said, at this stage, you don't need a smartphone because your phone is smarter than you. <laughs> I said, go sell it and use the rest to buy yam. And finish your school before you use What manner of people are we? Do you know that politicians are corrupt? But we can also corrupt our own selves. We can, we, sometimes when you are cheat, you, you have money. <laughs> the way you use money, that money, when I'm looking, if this is your government, you have a wife, you have children, 
you are renting, you have not built. And every month they pay you, you want new suit. And now you don't even want your family to know how much you earn. Then, the amount of money you spend on your car, you are standing there looking at your car as if it's a human being. The amount of money, you see, imagine your home is a, is a country and you are the president and you are the minister of economy and you go at the same time and see the way, minister of finance, and see the way you are managing your finance. You are corrupt. Your wife doesn't even know how much you earn. Your daughters are being slept with by guys because the basic things girls need, you can't even provide for them. The basic things girls need, you are not there. You are not there to show them love. You are not there to meet their needs. You are not there. You, your, your girls are just there for boys. But there is no man in their lives. Their graduation from fruitfulness to multiplication requires that somebody has to replant. I said, I have been using one car. This, this time, I've been using it for seven years. And the guys around me feel that it's time to change your car. It's time to change your car. Once I change my car, my boca, car. car is equal to car. As far as the car can move. And this year, the number, um, the amount I have invested in landed properties can buy me four or five of those cars that they want me to buy. But I have to make a choice. I have brought children to this world. There are young people like Ben, Savior, and Co. who have committed their future into my hands. I need to secure their future if they have a vision of working with me into the future. I need to reinvest into their organization. They don't have to be there one day and then I come and tell them, Charlie, we are collapsed. So we don't have money. I can't pay you this. Nobody has ever worked for me that I've told that person this month I can't pay you. It would never happen. So that if you have to fight my accountant, pay them early. Why are you not? Why have you not paid salary? I, I, do you understand what I'm talking about? If you don't replant, you cannot multiply. First Corinthians 3, verse 6. From the King James Version. I have planted, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. You see? See? For God to give increase, there must be planting and watering. In the absence of planting and watering, there cannot be increase. There cannot be increase. In the absence of planting and watering, there can never be increase for you in any way. We don't pray for increase. We plant for increase. We water for increase. You see the increase we have of late be experiencing in church? is because there are guys have invested in who at midnight when you are sleeping, they are praying. Late night, they are walking through dangerous places to win souls. I can fast all I can. If I don't get up from my prayer chamber and hit the streets for evangelism, increase will not come on the church. Increase will require planting. It is not every money that is troubable. You go outside this country when they are doing budget. When a man is doing budget, okay, they are what, what they call spending money. You know why we call that spending money? We call it chop money. But for us, money must be chopped. All my sisters, my siblings around me, they know that you can't change your lifestyle because your brother, your brother is titty of fair. I said no. No, if I, if I want to help you, I don't help you 
It's only God that blesses you, meets your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Because he created you. I did not create you. I meet your needs according to your level, not according to my level. I cannot spoil you. I cannot spoil you. I cannot say that because some time ago, years ago, when I was a young man and I could chew crabs and snails by heart, I will order for it. Mommy would do soup for me. Crabs, snails. You know, for Africa, crab is a delicacy. Snails, they're expensive. Oh. Now, how much is it sold in town? 20 cities. One for 20 cities. Snail or crab? Snails. Restaurant is how much? 100. Once a day, 100. And then mommy would go and buy snails, cook for me, and then the boys in my house. One can get two snails. I said, why are you spoiling the boy? He's not going to stay here forever. When he lives here, he cannot afford snails. But you have already made his tongue a snail tongue. He said, oh, honey, we cannot discriminate. I said, I'm not discriminating. I am not discriminating. I am meeting him at his level. What is the meaning of discrimination? This, this one is not discrimination. I said, do different soup for me and do different soup for them. He said, honey, this is not Christian. I said, it doesn't matter, but it is biblical. Some things are not Christian, but they are biblical. So, honey, if somebody sees that we are eating this soup and they are eating the other, I said, that's somebody who wants to look into my soup. It is a matter. It's not my matter. He wants to look into my soup and start saying that, why is daddy eating this and this one is eating that? When I was praying at the Abraham and Tennis Park, where were they? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? Are you following? So I'll preach this sermon on two Sundays. So I'm going to end here soon. And then I'll, I'll continue next week. But I want you to really understand where I'm going with this. What kind of behavior is this? Listen. Some of you, uh, your problem is your inability to manage expectations. There are people around you who are making you feel guilty. Your siblings are trying to let you do You are not helping us. And you are not helping us. And you have money and you are not helping us. Anybody who makes you feel that the help they need from you is money, that person is only being greedy. Most of the time, the help people need from you is to build their capacity to be able to generate their own money. You understand? Build their capacity to be able to generate their own money. Instead of you becoming a bank for them. And listen, any lifestyle you will not lead, don't finance it. If you have a sibling who gets up and is sleeping, not working, you will not live that life. I said, sometimes I can go days without sleeping. I'll just go and doze off on my bed for two days, for just two hours, and I'll get up. Those around me will tell you when I was preparing to defend my PhD thesis. I don't need PhD for anything. I, honestly, I don't need it. But just to motivate people around me. Just to make sure people around me will do it. The guys, two weeks, I will go and sit down from morning to evening, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you are snoring on your bed and you think that when, because you are related to me or you are a church member, or you know me. So when I get that money, I will have to, I have to be obligated to help you. Make sure, listen, if you don't manage that seed well, most Africans have never gotten to their multiplication because of family members. They eat your fruit and the seed inside Yes. You see, people who have dependency syndrome, they are like bottomless pit. 
no matter what you put inside, it never gets full because they are not looking at what they deserve. They are looking at what they are observing. Somebody did something for one church member. He did one and charged the church member 800 cities for doing one. And I went to see that in the church members. I said, oh, I like this thing. Then he called the person for me. The person came to my house. He was going to do that same thing, four for me. If you did one for 800, four, at least do it for 700. Do you know how, how much the person was going to charge me one? 3,000. He brought me invoice, 3,000. He's charging me according to my size. Your taste cannot change because you are eating in my house. You cannot change your taste because you are moved to my house. Because me, myself, I don't do that. I am a major rape planter. I am a major rape planter. Me. 80% of whatever fruit that comes to me, I replant it. 80%, if not more. Yes. 80%. What do I need? What do I need? When I brought people to this world, look at Pastor Titi Ofer alone. Look at his stomach. It's an indication that the guy will born and born. I think it did, it did is scared now. But Pastor Fek, I have 10 children. And they must be my responsibility. Do, do you know that? Do you know that if God meets Pastor Tetu of Fek's son, he will introduce himself as the God of Bishop Tetu of Fek. He will call my father first, the God of Reverend S.T. of Fek, the God of Bishop Titi Offer, before he comes to say the God of Kevin Titi Offer. God is the God of priority. He's the God that he expects you to be responsible for your first, second, third, and the fourth generation. That will come after you. Every choice you are making, every decision you are making, don't place yourself first. You are last on the line. Are you here with me? Do you understand? You must always be last. Today, when we close this service, go to your wardrobe, open it, look at the number of shoes there, look at the number of shoes, look at the number of clothes. Start thinking, which seed did I use to buy this instead of replanting it? Is that the reason why I am in financial crisis? Is that the reason why I am suffering? Is that the reason why things are not working for me? Because God has said, be fruitful and multiply. You can't hold God responsible for anything in your life. Come back next week. We'll talk from fruitfulness to re replenishing. God bless you. Thank you. I pray that the wisdom behind this message will have impact on your life. I pray that the power behind this message will have impact on your life. I declare and I speak that you will take this word, implement it, work with it, and God will show up for you. God will add your name to the names of the great people of the earth. God bless you and thank you very much.